It is easy to mentally divide our solar system into rocky things, icy things, gassy things, and things like Earth and Mars that like to be many different things at once. In our desire to group things, mistakes can get made, and for the longest time a lot of scientists believed Ceres, the largest asteroid in the asteroid belt, was nothing more than a homogeneous mix of minerals, or maybe a dry rocky world like our moon, that may vary with depth, but that is really just a lot of rock. But there were those who thought maybe, just maybe, this nearby sphere could hold water. Another idea is that Ceres is like uh, an icy moon. Um, it it uh, uh, expressed water onto the surface at some point, forming an ice shell, so as an icy crust and a rocky mantle. To figure out the story of Ceres, to learn if it is minerals that have water in their chemistry, or a world that has a layer of water, the research team looked for a key signature of water, hydrogen. With the grand instrument on dawn, they were able to map the concentrations of hydrogen near Akator Crater and other features, and with it, we believe, the distribution of water. We think that ice has survived in the shallow subsurface during the roughly 20 million years following the formation of Okator. Similarities between the global distribution of hydrogen and the pattern of large craters suggest impact processes have delivered ice to the surface elsewhere on Ceres. This kind of a distribution of subsurface ice is common in our solar system, at least if you are looking at the moons orbiting Jupiter, Saturn, and the other icy moons. And so the, the data from our research uh, support the idea that it's, it's really more like an icy moon. Ceres is far larger than other asteroids. It is, after all, the largest and the size makes it geologically more similar to giant icy moons than to most of its fellow rock asteroids. Those smaller bodies didn't have enough gravity for things to separate out into layers. Smaller, water-rich bodies, including the parent bodies of the carbonaceous chondrite meteorites, may not have experienced differentiation. So the findings could have implications for the evolution of icy bodies small and large. More broadly, as an ocean world, Ceres could be habitable and is therefore an attractive target to future missions. We are able to find this potential water thanks to the collisions that formed so many of Ceres' large craters, including Akator. These events dug away at the surface and revealed the ices and let it escape from below. The impact that formed Okator would have excavated crustal materials as deep as six miles so observed enhancements in the concentration of hydrogen within the crater and ejecta blanket support our interpretation that the crust is ice rich. The findings reinforce the emerging consensus that Ceres is a differentiated body in which ice separated from rock to form an icy outer shell and subcrustal ocean. And where there is water, we must question, could there also be life? Uh, it, it, it supports Ceres as being a good place to go uh, from the standpoint of astrobiology. Ceres has all the ingredients uh, that you would need for life. For now, there are no new planned missions to Ceres. But for all those folks waiting to send a probe to an icy moon, just remember, Ceres is much closer. And in many ways, geologically, just the same. Here's to hoping that this research and all the other amazing results from Dawn start a new era of asteroid exploration.